Hello, today is Saturday, April 3rd, 2021. I will be speaking English language, then I will switch to the Persian language. So the title is Revelation from Hassan Abbasi, how the Mullah's economy function. Background. At the time of the Pahlavi dynasty, Iranians went abroad to pursue social science with public funds. Upon their arrival to Iran, they gained employment in the field of their studies. Consequently, Iran began slowly to move from a developing nation to a developed country. However, the 1979 revolution, engineered by the U.S. President Jimmy Carter and the British Broadcasting Corporation, installed Khomeini in power in Iran. Iran's, Iran's progress toward a modern and developed nation stopped. The revolutionary force says that they acquire fake academic credentials such as Ibrahim Yazdi that they were saying he has PhD or Chamron um, to attend university and to acquire knowledge and to gain a PhD it requires studying 24 hours around the clock 7 days a week it's not easy so the US academic institutes were giving them just uh, paper so they fight with Iranian people to deceive Iranians uh, Institute to foment revolution in Iran and those who did not achieve any theoretical knowledge they began to shape Iran's economic policies political policies and social policies therefore I Iran began to suffer from stagnant economic policies political policies and social policies it took almost 40 years for the Islamic Republic of Iran to lose its identity as a savior of Iranians towards salvation and brought death and misery to Iranians. Hassan Abbasi's contribution to Iran. Mr. Abbasi is a revolutionary guard who participated during Iran and Iraq war. He provided his service to Iran. It is honorable and respectable what he did for Iran. Hassan Abbasi's, Abbasi's academic credential. Mr. Abbasi has given himself the academic credential title of PhD in the field of political strategies. He is working as a university professor and teaching university students. However, there is no record of him proving which university he enrolled to gain his PhD. Hassan Abbasi and military college. Mr. Abbasi does not have any record to prove he attended a military college to acquire the art of war. Hassan Abbasi's role at the Islamic Republic of Iran. Mr. Abbasi is also working as a political advisor to the state of Islamic Republic of Iran. Mr. Abbasi has one strategy on his mind, engaging in symmetrical warfare with Western nations because the Western countries are infidel and corrupt due to their cultural value belief system. He strongly advocates the notion of martyrdom. Hassan Abbasi's economic principle. Mr. Abbasi ha says that Western nation has one form of economic, buying goods and services. However, the Islamic economy is focusing on selling. Mr. Abbasi does not know how the economic system functions. The financial system has two fundamental principles, supply and demand. The economic system functions in this format, all being equal. A seller sells its goods and services to a buyer due to the law of supply and demand principle at the equilibrium price. Otherwise, the market economy or any form of economic system does not work. In the absence of a proper functioning economic system of a nation, it will, fail, it will fall in a, a state of disarray as the Islamic Republic of Iran's economy is dysfunctional and defunct now, and the Mullahs hand over Iran's national sovereignty to China. Mr. Abbasi shed light on Mullah's plan to hand over Iran to China. Mr. Abbasi does, Abbasi does not know political terminology. During his lecture on his YouTube channel, cleric Hassan Rouhani wanted Iran to have an open door policy with the US and the idea stemmed from China and US foreign policy. Mr. Abbasi called this form of policy an open door policy. 
China and the US did not have an open door policy. China and the US had a ping pong diplomacy because China implemented the policy of autarky. However, the ping pong diplomacy opened China's economic communist economic system to the cap to the capitalist and liberal financial system. China's bargaining chip chip with the US. Mr. Abbas is correct when he says China had a bargaining chip with the US because China had nuclear power and was part of the United Nations Security Council's permanency seat. The Islamic Republic of Iran does not have the same advantage as China. Mullah's handing over Iran to China. Cleric Hassan Rouhani drafted a manifesto called New China. In this manifesto, he wanted to use a similar strategy to open the U.S. embassy in Iran. However, Rouhani failed to do so. Currently, the Mullah sold Iran's natural resources to China in return for military protection for one reason. The Mullah deposited Iran's asset from cash to any form of commodity in for foreign banks. Thus, the Mullah make Iran's economy to become bankrupt. Iranians are impoverished and are experiencing class conflict at the high point. The Mullahs have everything and Iranians have nothing. Iranians want to save themselves from poverty and terror. Iranians are calling for a regime change in Iran. Iran's security apparatus feel the same way as Iranians. They are not able to have access to the basic necessity of life. Therefore, the Mullahs brought China's army to Iran to kill Iranians at the time of uprising. The Chinese military executed the same tactic they used in Tibet and Hong Kong. The Chinese military will not show mercy to Iranians. China is exploiting Iran's natural resources, whether in the body of water of the Persian Gulf and other natural resources. Chinese corporations will disregard environmental issues and will cause environmental devastation. Most importantly, Iran does not have a labor law. The Chinese corporates will abuse and exploit Iranian workers in their factories. End game. The end game is between Iranians against the Mullahs and the Chinese military. Iranians do not want the Mullahs in Iran. Iranians will speak against the regime in Iran. The Chinese military will respond with the iron fists against Iranians. Iranians are unlike the Chinese because Iran, Iran's culture is all about being standing up for justice. The Chinese culture, mentality, and values all, are all about being subservient to a higher power. As Samuel Huntington discussed the theory of clash of civilization, it may happen in Iran. So I will be speaking the Persian language. Um, آقای عباسی بیشتر ایرانی رو میشناسن میدونن که مال سپاه پاسداران هستن ایشون در دوران جنگ ایران و عراق خدمت خیلی بزرگی برای کشور ایران کردن رفتن جبهه جنگیدن برای ایران خب این کار خیلی مقدس و خوبی رو برای ایران انجام ده ولی دلیل برای نمیشه که ایشون استاد دانشگاه باشه وقتی که مدرک تحصیلی نداره که در دانشگاه بخواد کارهای تحصیلی انجام بده و یه مسئله جالبی که ایشون میگه اینه که ملا روحانی یه منیفستو پابلش میکنه با چندین نفر با اعضای لیبرال و خودش که میخوان چاینا رو این درهای کمونیستی رو که باز میکنن برای و آمریکایا میگن این این همون پرنسیپل و همون پالیسی رو ما به اجرا بزنیم البته آقای حسن عباسی به این میگه به این که مثلا چاینا با آمریکا بوده میگه اوپن دور پالیسی اوپن دور پالیسی وجود نداره یه همچین چیزی تو تاریخ نوشت نشده من رو روی کتابی که اینترنشنال ریلیشن کتابش درسش رو گرفتم و کتابش رو خوندم و از دانشگاه قبول شدم از اون درس اینترنشنال ریلیشن تو اونجا میگن پینگ پونگ پالسی پینگ پونگ پالسی هستش نه اینکه اوپن دور پالسی البته ایشون تو یه جاش درست میگه تو اون ویدیو کلیپی که از یوتیوب چنل خودش اینه که چین قدرت نوکلیر داشته اتمی داشته و جزء پرمننت ممبرای یونایتد سازمان ملل هستش 
و میتونه با آمریکا یا کشورهای دیگه بارکینگ چیپ داشته باشه بتونه کارهایی که میخواد بتونه انجام بده مولا ها نمیتونن این کار رو انجام بدن چون که دسترسی به نیروی اتمی ندارن خب این ببین خطرها رو داره میگه داره میگه خودش بعدش میاییم نگاه میکنیم میبینیم که امروزه سربازای چینی دارن وارد ایران میشن دارن چینی ها هر چیزی که تو خلیج فارس عزیز ما هستش هر چیزی هستش ماهی اینا دارن میدوزدن از ما دارن از ما میدوزدن نه اینکه مثلا کار کنن دو میلیارد بیش از دو میلیارد جمعیت داره تو کشور چینی خب دارن این کار رو میکنن و ما باید این بفهمیم که آخر سر جمهوری اسلامی داره میفته و سپاه پاسان بسیج خود اون آدم هایی که اونجا هستن این هم انسان هست این هم میخواین یه لغمه نون حلال بخورن و اینا روزی که ببینم مردم ایران گرست نستن خودشون هم گرست نستن من فکر نکنم سپاه پاستان بخواد مردم ایران رو بکشه من فکر نکنم ارتش بخواد ایرانی ها رو بکشه مجبور میشن به ارتش چین بگن حمله کنید به مردم ایران خب اینا هم حمله میکنن اینا به مردم خودشون هم حمله میکنن اینا هیچ کنه عقاید مقدسی ندارن همون کارایی که تو تبت کردن همون کارایی که تو هنگ کنگ کردن سر ایرانی ها پیاده خواهند کرد و ایرانی ها رو به قصد کش میکشن ولی چون مردم چین دینشون به صورتیه که و پرهنگشون به صورت اینه که کسانی که قدرت دارن تو باید گوش کنی بهشون به این صورت فکر میکنن ولی مردم ایران بر اساس ادالت کار میکنن به فرض مثال ما میگیم امام حسین رفت به میدون جنگ با 72 نفر بر علیه یزید حتی میدونست شکست میخوره رفت جنگید به خاطر ادالت همه چیز در ایران برای ادالته و خیلی فرق داره با طرز فرق تفکر چینی ها و همینطور سامول هانتینگتون میگه که مثلا کلش آف سیولیزیشن یه همچین چیزی شاید رخ بده که مردم ایران قیام کنن به پا خیزن به سربازهای چینی به شدت حمله کنن و چینم خوب متقابلا میخواد حمله کنه و درگیری های سنگینی رخ میده واقعا مسئله خیلی کامپلیکیت شده الان یعنی با آوردن سرازان چین در منطقه حالا اونایی که مازوت میزدن بیت کوین درست میکردن اون به جاش حالا که سرباز میاد و تنها چیزی که تمرین دیده سرنیزه است خیلی خطرناکه خیلی خطرناکه.